Konnichiwa, Tenny Pankyo Nata Tomodachi. Welcome back, Paint Hand Pals. We're gonna build and paint this 144 scale Gundam. This model kit is a Bandai 30 minute mission of the Spinatio Army type Gundam. I think we'll take a 30 minute mulligan on this 30 minute mission. I wasted like 15 minutes cleaning and organizing beds. Okay, let's build this thing. Gundams were created by Yoshiyuki Tomino alongside a collective creator group for Sunrise known as Hajime Yatate. They first emerged in the 1979 Japanese TV series Mobile Suit Gundam. This show depicted massive mobilized man-powered military mecha that manifested into a media monster. Bandai's big stompy robots are icons of over 50 TV series, manga, movies, video games, model kits, and other merch. This episode of Paint Hand Dan was brought to you by... Creme brulee. I mean, nobody wants to admit they ate 18 jars uh. of creme brulee, but I did, and I'm ashamed of myself. You know, the first one doesn't count, and then you get a few more, and I burnt the next one with a blowtorch. I don't know, I just kept eating. Okay, back to the show. I primed it solid white with a rattle can, and then splattered null oil all over it. Gundams are most often airbrushed because of the flat panels and surfaces, but we're not going to do that. Here's some of the paint we're using. Magic Blue, Plasmatic Bolt, Grim Black, Incubus Darkness, Rune Fang Steel, Lead Belcher, Nihilac Oxide, Hex Wraith Flame, and Night Hunt Gloom. Okay, let's paint! I started by adding lead belcher to the metallic areas that would wear out and then grimed them up with a little bit of grim black. Next I'm going to follow up with painting most of the mech's exoskeleton with magic blue. The transparency of the speed paint probably works against these flat panels, but I'm hoping to pull it up and let it collect where the panels intersect and then let it darken, which will hopefully save me some time edge highlighting. I'm using the Incubus Darkness to cover the underlying parts of the exoskeleton. I think I would have an easier time if I had a darker underlayer than the white. There's a tiny bit of transparency to this paint, especially when you water it down, which is kind of frustrating. After applying all this Incubus Darkness, I'm going to find a way to brighten it up and add some green around the edges, give a little bit of a sci-fi pop.
They'll have to do lots of edge highlighting. I'm using the Nylock Oxide for that. I can definitely see why most people would paint these with an airbrush. Now, I know some viewers must be thinking, this is not the typical tabletop mini. This thing isn't really even a mini, and it's not even for tabletop gaming. But I've never built a Gundam, nor have I painted one, and I think it's really important to try new things. Wait a second. Oh crap, I forgot his armor. Oh come on, you see all those panels? It's gonna take forever. You don't need your weapons. Ugh, okay, our Gundam is finished. You know what? You were right. The armor looks pretty damn cool. In addition to the armor, this Gundam came with a sword, a shield, and a rifle. I also used some milliput and made him an extra sword. Pretty sure you can tell which one I made. This Gundam is the ultimate badass. State of the badass art. Check it out. Independently targeting particle beam phalanx. Wah! Try half a city with this puppy. We got tactical smart missiles, phase plasma pulse rifles, RPGs, we got sonic electronic ball breakers. We got nukes, we got knives, sharp sticks. Knock it off, Hudson. Okay, thank you so much for hanging out with me to the end of the video. I appreciate- Whoa. W what? Did anyone actually see that thing hatch? Whoa, holy shit guys, I think there's something in the room with me. Sorry everybody, but I gotta run. Don't forget to like and subscribe.